All right, all right. <laughs> Today we're doing Python and I'm testing this monster right here. It's the Core i9 12th generation Intel model. And this test is insanely intense. That was hard to say. Anyway, try saying that three times fast. This is Python. Let me show you what we're running. For those of you that are new here, you've never seen me do this before, but I'm using Benchmarks Game, which has all these different languages and all these different algorithms. And Mandelbrot happens to be kind of algorithm that really uses up all the CPUs. Check out the CPU load on some of these. So you get to pick a language, pick an algorithm, and you can execute it. And that's what we're gonna be doing today on this Intel machine versus the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip. Mandelbrot was the name of a mathematician who came up with fractals if you're not familiar with that so I'm gonna pick Python here because that's what we're gonna be doing today and it's gonna be this one right here Python number three now I've already set up miniconda uh, it's like an environment for executing Python and I do have a video on how to set that up on a Mac if you're interested link down below I'm gonna take this code right here and copy the whole thing I'm just gonna yank this code copy and paste it you've never done that before have you I've created a directory for it and I'm gonna open this up in VS Code. Let's create a new file. I'll call this start.py. Okay, it's just a Python file and I'm gonna paste all that code that I just copied in here. Don't need to read the code. Don't care what it says. I mean, it's kind of cool that they're doing this multi-threaded stuff, but it's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to learn Python or how to do that stuff. I'm just here to run it today. Let's make sure this works. By the way, the version of Python I'm using is 3.10. And here on the Windows machine, let's just double check 3.10.4 on both of these machines. Okay, I'm gonna set this up the same way on the Windows machine as well. All right, now I've got the code base on both machines. I've got the start.py file and I'm gonna run it. Now, if you're interested in doing this yourself, you can do that as well. Each one of these tests shows you how to run the code down below. There's a command line sample to run. So here they're suggesting you issue 16,000 as the parameter to this script. So that's Python and then start and then 16,000. Simple as that. However, I'm gonna do 1600 because it's shorter. Let me show you what happens, okay? This is, you hear that beeping? That's what happens when you run it. When you run it, this particular algorithm spits out this pattern to the console and I want to avoid that. So I'm going to use 16,000, but I'm going to send that over to dev null. Okay. That way we don't see anything. And I also want to time this command, the execution of this whole process. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the line and give this the time command. Simple as that. That's going to be the setup for the Mac. On Windows, it's going to be a little bit different because I'm going to use PowerShell's measure command. There is no time command on Windows, so we have to use measure command. And in curly braces, I'm going to give it the command to execute, which is going to be the same. Python start dot py 16,000 and measure command is going to swallow the output anyway. So I don't need to send that output anywhere. All right. Our friend Schwarzenegger. Anybody know this one? Those people that are new here might not be familiar with the Schwarzenegger. This is the tool that I use to execute my uh, queries. So we see who wins. And I'm gonna push this enter at the same time on both keyboards. Let's go. <laughs> They're off. Ooh, do you hear that? The Intel machine is going nuts. Oh yeah, if you hear all that noise, that's the Intel machine spinning up. And we have a winner. The Mac Studio beats out the Intel machine here by quite a bit. Wow. Okay, so we have a result. Our initial result is 17 seconds here for the M1 chip and 28 seconds on the Intel chip. Wow, that is a big deal. And these are the fastest times I've ever seen to execute this thing. Let's see what's happening under the hood. So I'm gonna increase the parameter to 50,000 on both of these to give us a little bit more time to look. Let's kick them off at the same time and off they go. Now, while that's happening, I wanna have a look on the Mac at the activity monitor. Let's have a look at what's happening here. So if we take a look at the CPUs, you'll see that there's a lot of these processes that are happening, 20 of them, because there's 20 cores, so they're all being used up. Here is the CPU history. Look at that. CPU history is being totally used up. By the way, green bars here mean that it's a user activity, a user app, and that's what this is. And if this was a red bar, that would be an operating system uh, history. Okay, so that's definitely working. Now, while that's happening, I'm not running the Windows machine yet, by the way. Yes, this one is getting a little warmer. You can see that the temperature is up to 70, but the RPM of the fan is still the same at 1330. It's always pretty much the same. It just doesn't change. And the machine is quiet. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, the Windows machine, I'm gonna kick that off. Let's listen. Is it doing anything? 
It says CPU is at 100. I'm not hearing it yet so far, but you can see that the history of the CPU is showing quite a lot of activities. I wonder why I'm not hearing anything. Should I be nervous? Okay, maybe it decided to do this one quietly. Maybe it's just not hot enough to spin up the fans yet. Nonetheless, this is working and you can see that the CPUs are all being used up here. That's why I really like this test. Okay, Windows machine is done. Let's have a look. Wow, that's a big difference. Also notice uh, how the CPU history just cuts off right there when the tasks are done. So the Mac finished in two minutes and 45 seconds for the 50,000 test and the Windows machine finished in five minutes and 20 seconds. By the way, that's 5.34, not five minutes, 34 seconds. So the last one I misspoke, five minutes, 20 seconds, which is significantly longer. It's two times longer than the Mac. So there you go, folks. That's Python for you doing the Mandelbrot multi-core test. If you found this useful, I'd appreciate a like and consider subscribing for more videos like this one. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.